Hey folks, uh, so we're going to run through. I'm not probably going to do this very often with homework. Homework is where you've got to kind of make some connections on your own. But I figured this one, especially since I don't get to see you guys, um, might be worth it to go through this homework together. So what I'm looking for here is for you to look at these transformations and then come up with a parent function to work with and kind of discuss what's going to happen to that function. So for instance, if I was to do the first one, g of x equals negative f of x. So f of x is my parent function. And then we're applying a transformation to get our new function, g of x. Well, all we're doing is multiplying our function by a negative. So if you're changing your function values, that's going to be a vertical. So this is a vertical uh, reflection. That's what a negative does, right? Vertical reflection. So then you would take some, what if I tried to get real fancy here? I wonder if I'm going to regret doing this. But um, you're going to take some parent function and then kind of make a sketch of the transformed function. So let's go pretty simple here. This is my parent function is... Uh, the quadratic and it gets reflected so there's going to be uh, there's my transformation so you're going to pick a function to work with you're going to say what the translation transformation is first you're going to pick a function a parent function and then you're going to kind of try to sketch what the uh, transformed function looks like so like I said I'm going to do a couple of these with you if you already feel confident and you want to pause um, I think that's that's encouraging that's what our goal is. But if you want to watch a couple more together, that's, that's fine too. So the first ones are easy, though. Those are the ones you're probably going to want to pause on, but whatever. Let's go. All right, so here we go. Next one, g of x equals f of negative x. So this time there's a negative, so I know it's going to be a reflection, but the reflection is, is on the x. So this is going to be a horizontal reflection. Now, this time, I don't want to pick x squared again. x squared is kind of boring in this case because if I reflect horizontally, I'm going to get the exact same picture. So this time, I'm going to use the cube root graph. The cube root graph, this is the parent function. And when I do the transformation, so we're going to reflect all the negative x's are going to become the positive x's, and all the positive x's are going to become the negative x's. So we get something that looks like that. It does not have to be perfect. You just have to have kind of a basic the, this, the basic shape drawn. All right, let's have, maybe you could pause on this one. Maybe you're ready for this one. I'm going to give you some advice. I would like you to try uh, to reflect the parent function. What parent function is that? Uh, if you don't know, you got to start studying harder. Um, this is the exponential parent function. So I'd like you to pause and try to sketch what does the transformed parent function look like? Okay, so let's see what happened here. So this is going to be this. It gets attached to the, the uh, function. This gets attached to the x values. So we're going to have a vertical and horizontal reflection. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect this thing first. Maybe I'll draw an extra graph here. So this will be my first reflection. So I'm going to reflect this thing vertically. So now it's going to go down here. So I took them to the whoosh, it's going to go down there. And then I'm going to also reflect this thing horizontally. So the asymptote is going to flip over here. And then the uh, the other branch is going to flip over there. So this is where my graph is going to end up. So it's going to look something like that. Now are all these, the curviness, I don't care about any of that, as long as it looks somewhat like the exponential function. Okay, so, like I said, I'm not going to keep reminding you. Well, I'll try to keep reminding you, I should say. I will try to keep reminding you, but pause as much as you can and try to do stuff on your own. Waiting for me to do it or watching me do it. It's kind of nice for the first couple ones, but after that, you're going to want to make sure that you can do this stuff without me helping you. Um, I'm going to take the absolute value function here. That's my parent. Okay, so I'm multiplying the function values by 2. That means all my y values are going to be twice as tall. So this is going to be, if I'm affecting y values, it's going to be a vertical. 
We're multiplying, so we're going to stretch by 2. So my graph is going to look something like that. I tried to draw it a little bit uh, with the, the y values a little bit taller than they were before. So if you um, maybe, I don't know, is it helpful for me to tell you which function? Maybe it's helpful for me to tell you which function to start with. I'd like you to sketch the sine parent function here. No, cosine. Let's do cosine. The cosine parent function. So pause it. Try to sketch your parent function for cosine. All right, cosine. Cosine is the one. So when I think of cosine of 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so that's the one that starts up high. So it's going to look something like this. I really wish I would have drawn this better because it's already pretty tight to the x-axis. But, okay, now we're going to um, apply a transformation. This is 2 getting multiplied to the x, so it's not going to affect the y values. It's going to affect the x values. And anything affecting x does the opposite or the inverse of what you would think. So this is going to be a hor horizontal compression by 2. Or, in other words, you're going to uh, stretch by one half. That helps. I understand that better. How you do it is going to be up to you. So now instead of getting one curve in here, sorry, one period, I'm going to be able to get two in there. So that took the graph and went whoosh. It compressed it down so that it happened more often. This is a double transformation again. So, um, uh, I think I could do this double, both of them in one move, though. All right, let's see here. So, first of all, let's take the, let's do cosine again. Let's do cosine function again. So, sketch your cosine curve. What are my two transformations? So, I've got a one-half multiplied to the function. That's going to be a vertical stretch. I call everything a stretch. I know I probably shouldn't, but I do. Vertical stretch by one half. The two connected to the x is going to be a horizontal stretch by one half. If you wrote a horizontal compression by two, that's great. That means exactly the same thing. So my graph should be half as tall and it should be twice occurring twice as often so it's going to get squished down so these x distances should be half of what they were before so now i want to go half as tall and happen twice as often whoosh something like that now remember your goal here is to get to the spot where you don't have to watch me do it you can do this on your own that's where we want to be the next one i would think would be a great one for you to try to do on your own All right, my family. Uh, let's do the. Uh, let's just do an absolute value. That's a pretty easy. One. I mean, we could do a quadratic or something too, but I'm going to do absolute value. Okay, I'm going to leave you to verbally describe the transformation and then make a sketch. Pause. Go. All right. Let's see what happens. So this plus two is attached to the function. It's not attached to x. So that's going to affect my y values. So if it's affecting my y values, it's going to be a vertical. We're adding, so that's a shift, a vertical shift by positive 2. Now, you might write something like up 2. That's fine. They mean the same thing. So I would go up 2 from here. I don't really want to make tick marks. If you felt like making tick marks, you get a gold star. See if you can do these next two. Uh, I'm going to do absolute value for the next two. So if you want to pause here and try to finish number eight and number nine on your own, go for it. So like I said, I'm going to do absolute value for both of these. Uh, what I want to use, maybe a nice purple here. Okay, so let's see. I'm attaching a plus two to the X, so that's going to be a translation which means it's a shift. 
but it's going to affect X, so it's going to be a horizontal shift by negative 2. Remember, the uh, X does the opposite of what you would think, so that's going to shift our graph horizontally back two spots. It's not going to change the width at all. It's just going to shift it backwards. All right, now we have a double move here. So we have a, a, a minus 2 attached to the x. We have a minus 2 attached to the function. So this is going to be a vertical shift by minus 2. Vertical does what it, y does what it says. And then we're going to do a horizontal shift. Ugh. You see it? Horizontal shift by positive 2. So my graph is going to shift down to and, f of course, forward to. So now it's in the middle of my little notes here. Just my luck. It should look something like that. Uh, let's see. What would be a good function for the next? I'm going to do all my little. Yeah, let's just do one at a time. All right, let's see if you can handle this. I'm going to encourage you to pause here. I can't make you pause, but you'll never know if you're doing it right until you start to try to do it on your own. So this, let's do just a regular quadratic, pretty basic. And I'd like you to apply these transformations. Write them verbally here, and then try to draw a picture of what's going to happen to your graph. All right, so let's run through. I see three things occurring. Some people might see only two. I disagree. I like to think about the negative as being separate from the three. So the negative is attached to the function. So that's going to be a vertical reflection. And there's a three attached to the function. So that's going to be a vertical stretch by three. And plus 1 is attached to the function, so that's going to be a vertical shift by plus 1. So remember, the order in which you have to do things, you have to do the stretches, the, the stretch shrinks, sorry, the stretch and compressions and the reflections first because they're connected by mole, and then you do the shifts last. So my graph is going to reflect. It's going to stretch and get thinner. So I'm going to pull it on the x-axis, which is going to make it get long and longer and thinner. And then I'm also going to shift it up by 1. So I'm going to go up by 1, and it's going to shift it down. Not shift it down. Reflect it down. And that's supposed to be thinner. It looks pretty good, I'd say. This, is, this looks thinner than that. So there's a vertical stretch. All right, now this one's a little sneaky. You might want to watch the video on this one because of the way uh, they wrote the transformation. So here we are with stuff getting attached to X. So right away, I know this is going to be a horizontal. But we have to do a rewrite on this. And I don't know if you remember last year we talked a little bit about rewrites. But rewrites are when you need to clean up something algebraically before you can really attack it. In this case, do you notice, remember, do you remember from our notes, let me grab our notes here, everything looked like this. These were the transformations. So if you put something attached to the X, but you're also doing a shift on the X, you have to make sure that that factor is taken out. So if you look at this, this shift, if I were to distribute this B, it would get multiplied. B and C would get multiplied together. So you've got to be a little bit careful here because right now this is not a shift. It's part of a shift, but I have to factor out the coefficient or a common term. So I'm going to do a rewrite. This function is really F of, what do these both have in common? A negative 3. I shouldn't even say that. What I should say is you must factor this value out. It doesn't matter if they have something in common. Most of the time they will, but I have to take this coefficient out. And I get x. Now I took out a negative 3, so that's going to leave behind a positive 1. So let's take, um, let's do the log function. So I, I'm going to encourage you to pause. Or I'll give you five seconds. How about that? That should be long enough. Sketch a log down here. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Log looks like this. 
whoosh, it's the exponential flipped on its side. Okay, now let's have you make a list. Will you list the transformations that occur here? I'm going to have you pause. Okay, that's hopefully you got it. So I, first of all, I've got negative 3 is getting multiplied to x stuff. So that's going to be a horizontal. Oh, nope, nope, I fell for it. The first thing that happens is the negative. So that's going to be a horizontal reflect. And that 3 is getting multiplied, so that's going to be a horizontal stretch. I always like to say stretch. But because it's attached to x, it's going to do the inverse, horizontal stretch by one third. And we've got a plus 1 added to the x, so that's going to be a horizontal shift by opposite, so negative 1. So our graph is going to be reflected horizontally. Then it's going to be horizontally stretched by one third. So that's going to actually make it get wider. Kind of weird. I know when I say stretch or shrink, um, it gets confusing. But uh, if you multiply by three, multiply. No, 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 no. I said that wrong. A stretch by one third is going to get squeezed in. All right. Let's go up and reference. Yeah, stretch by one half actually gets squeezed in. So a stretch by one third is going to get squeezed tighter towards the middle of the graph, and then we're going to shift it back one. So um, I'm going to actually figure out where my shift is going to go first. So this asymptote that was here is going to get shifted back one. And then we're going to reflect and squeeze. So I tried to, I reflected it across the other side of the asymptote, and I tried to draw it tighter to the asymptote. I don't know how well I did, but I'm curious if we did the, let's double check this one with a calc. Okay, so I would say my function, what do we say, log? So I, we, almost always we use natural log when we say log. You can use the log button if you want, but in this class it's almost always natural log. So here's natural log of x. There's our picture. Ah, that's not a good window stuck. Zoom six. There's our picture. Okay. So now let's see what happens when I apply natural log of, and then instead of having x in there, I'm going to have negative 3x minus 3. Negative 3x minus 3. Now that should then generate this picture. Let's see if it does. Bada boom. There it is. Now, keep in mind, this really goes down, 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 down forever. So if I hit trace and I jump to my other curve, you can see here it goes. See, like right there. So it looks like it stops right there. But if I go down to like negative 1.0001, you see it's actually, it goes down there. Your calculator just won't sketch it. Maybe if you have one of those fancy calcs, it will. But anyway, there it goes. There's our picture. Now, this is what I'm talking about with the horizontal compressions and stretches, I'm not going to be super picky. If you drew yours, I mean, come on, how are you supposed to draw something that well? Now, if it's something like this, you better draw that accurately, right? There's a big difference between a parabola getting stretched and a log function getting stretched. It's much harder to, to um, display what that looks like. All right, we've got a couple more. Maybe you can try these on your own. Int, int, int. Okay, I'm running out of room here. Um, what could we do here? Let's just do, let's just do. Ooh, what would be a good function? I guess we could just do a parabola. Let's try that, see how that looks. So let's go through our list here. Now remember, this is one of those sneaky ones where this really belongs on the end. So negative 2, f of x over 2 plus 1. So the negative is attached to the function. So that's a vertical reflect. And the 2 is attached to the function. So that's a vertical stretch. 
by 2. The x over 2, that's a 1 half connected to the x. So that's a horizontal stretch by what? So what's connected to x is a 1 half. So if that's, connect, if that's the thing with x, it always does the inverse. So this time we're doing a stretch by 2. And we have a plus 1 that's attached to the function, not to the x. So that's a vertical shift of plus 1. Okay, so our graph is going to get flipped over. It's going to get stretched in the y direction, which is going to make it thinner. Then it's going to get stretched by 2 in the x direction. No, I said it wrong, didn't I? No, compressed by 1 half would be a stretch by 2. This will be interesting to see what our picture looks like. Because I'm curious if our vertical stretch will get undone by our horizontal stretch. So it's going to take our picture and make it twice as tall. But then our horizontal stretch is going to make one act like two and it will I guess it depends on what family of functions you're talking about yeah boy I don't know this one would be a lot to try to graph guys we can try it I mean if you did it depends on what function you're talking about so if we're looking at I wouldn't give you one that was this tough I would maybe expect you to list this I would expect you to say all that, but I don't think I'd expect you to try to graph it because look what would happen. So like the x squared function, okay, and then we're going to apply negative 2 times the x squared function, but x is getting divided by 2 before it's getting squared, plus 1. So there's the original. There's the parent reflected. Oh, it's a little bit wider. I guess that makes sense in this case because the horizontal stretch is getting squared where the vertical stretch is only getting multiplied by 2. Now let's change this to an absolute value. So math, F1, oops, alpha, uh, dang nabbit, now I'm in the wrong spot. Alpha, absolute value. So here's X. Now instead of being squared, let's see if I can insert here, insert an absolute value. Yeah, I have to do a little bit of deleting. Negative 2. Hey, you're supposed to be gone too, friend. Negative 2, absolute x over plus 1. Now, I bet you this time it'll be the same width. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because it got shifted up 1, so it's off by a little bit. But look at the, the angle that it's at. That's interesting. Because this time, the... Vertical stretch by 2 and the horizontal stretch by 2 undoes each other because neither of them are going to is stronger. Remember when we did the squared? The squared would be getting the over 2. That stretch would have more of an impact. So, yeah, let's not try to sketch this one. Let's just list the, the things. Um, oh, now we get into some absolute values. Remember we did this at the end of our notes. So the absolute values, let's do, uh, let's do sine. Okay, here you go. Make a sketch of sine. Pause it if you don't remember. Come on. All right, let's see how you did. Sine. Sine of zero is zero. So that's the one that starts here and goes like this. And then this side, remember, it's just, uh, it's the same picture over and over and over again. Okay, what's our transformation? Who's getting absolute valued? The function. So that means all my y values will become positive. All function values will become positive. So for instance, this part here is still up there. That's good. But then this little negative bit will become positive. This positive chunk will still be positive. This negative will flip positive. All these negative y values flipped up because they got absolute valued. Now, my graph isn't very good because it looks like it's half as tall. I didn't mean that. Sorry about that.
but it should be the same height as this, just these negative portions flip to the top. So we're getting close to the end here. Ah, I wasn't supposed to use that there. I almost made perfect notes. Uh, what would be a good color? Let's do a blue. Let's do uh, let's do the sine curve again. So I'm going to sketch sine. So who's getting absolute value this time? Just the x value. So all the negative x values act like the positive x values. So anything that was happening on this side becomes this side. So they become the, the, the okay, this is how Corpy explains it. Maybe, maybe it makes sense to explain it here too. If you think about it, if all these negative x's become these positive x's, okay, they act the same way. That means whatever was happening over here is gone. So all this stuff in these two quadrants is gone. And then these two quadrants are going to get reflected over here. So this quadrant one and four are going to stay the same because these are positive X's. So they're going to act exactly the same way. Well, now the negative, let's say this is positive one. It goes up there. Well, now negative one is going to go up there as well. And let's say that's two and that's zero. So two is going to be zero. And three is negative one. So negative three would become negative one. So it doesn't slide it back. It reflects it back like this. So the positive x's and the negative x's are doing the same thing. So coming from zero as I go this way, coming from zero as I go this way, they should look exactly the same, which is different than the parent function. This is periodic. So you would go one period and then repeat again. So like, for instance, one goes up, negative one goes down. Those are not the same values. And let's just list again for this last one what happens. So I've got the absolute value of all my function values. So that's going to mean all function values will become positive. And negative x values will equal positive x values. Okay, so that's a lot. That's just the first page, but I'm going to pause here and let you uh, digest some of that and maybe get started on the next part of the homework, but I'm going to do it in a, vid in a different video.